Hello, this is a sequence of lectures on group theory and these lectures are all based on this book that is a book written by me, it is called Modern Algebra, that is the name of the author, that is me. Now this book is written in a weird way, so all the mathematics here is given in English but all the explanations are given in Bengali. And I also have a very idiosyncratic way of presenting the topic. Now some students have requested me, some students who do not read Bengali have requested me to translate this book into English since that is going to take a lot of time. So I suggested that I would just start a video series using the same style as the book, following the book but in English. Now this book is pretty thick, so this lecture series will be based on chapters 2, 3, uh, 2, 3 and 5, these are all devoted to group theory, mainly for undergraduate mathematics honors students. Let us start with a story that is often attributed to Archimedes. It is said that Archimedes had two servants and he was once very angry with his servants and he gave them this punishment. He took them to a structure like this where there were seven pillars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he asked them to count the pillars in this way, they will call pillar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and after that 8, 9 and so on. Now the servants were to count up to the number 1000. So they will continue counting up to 1000 and they were to report to Archimedes the particular pillar that the counting stopped on. Now one of the servants tried to do it using the brute force method. He actually did the counting. But the other servant was clever. <coughs> he took a shortcut. He observed that if you count like this, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Since there are 7 pillars, every time you come to a multiple of 7, you are arriving at the very last pillar. So proceeding like this, he could quickly see that this is a problem about dividing 1000 by 7 and carrying out the division, he found out that the remainder is 6. So that is the remainder. So he knew that for the last multiple of 7 before 1000, he will be here. After that he started counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So he reported that this must be the pillar where the counting ends. Now carefully observe <coughs> this particular setup. We had a concrete problem, a concrete problem involving pillars and counting. But the servant, the clever servant converted to an abstract problem of dividing 1000 by 7 and taking the remainder. This is the essence of doing abstract algebra. You have a concrete problem and you see that there is a mathematical structure behind it and you utilize that to solve it. Now the beauty of abstract algebra comes mainly from the fact that underlying different apparently unrelated problem, you have the same mathematical abstraction. As an example, consider yet another situation where I have got a soldier who is facing either in either of the four directions, north, east, south and west. So initially the guy is facing north. Now he is doing a parade 
and in the parrot you can give him certain instructions the instructions are left l which means turn 90 degree towards left thus if he is now standing like this after the left command he will face in the west direction if he is standing in the west after the left command he will face in the south direction he will move in to, towards the left by an angle of 90 degree similarly there is a common r if he is like this by the r command he will move like this if he is like this by the r command he will move like this you have a command which is about turn let me call it a so if he is facing like this about turn he will face in the opposite direction and we have a common halt which means stay where you are okay now suppose this fellow is standing initially facing north and now i give him the command this i say you do the following you do left about turn and you do again left about turn left about turn and you do it 11 times and after that i give him the command right 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 and halt so left about turn left about turn in this way 11 times and then right 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 halt the question is in which direction is he going to face now you can do it in the brute force the concrete way actually stand facing it and keep on turning 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 and if you manage to still keep standing after all these instructions your head will start to swim and you might fall lose your balance then you will find what's the final direction but there is a much simpler abstract way of solving it and that abstract way is to not to consider these as these directions but call them using some name suppose i call it zero i call this say one two and three then what is the effect of L? If you are in 0, you will go to 1. If you are 1, then you will go to 2. If you are at 2, you will go to 3. So it is just like adding 1. Except that when you are at 3, you will go back to 0. So I can consider this as an operation which is basically adding followed by taking remainder by dividing with 4. So it is add 1. So plus L it, so L is plus 1 modulo 4. Modulo 4 means you do your usual addition and then divide by 4 and take the remainder. Similarly, right will make you go in the other direction. So it is minus 1, of course, modulo 4. So if you are at 0, you go minus 1. That is minus 1 and minus 1 mod 4 is same as 3. What is about turn? It is very easy to guess now. It should be plus 2. You could as well call it minus 2. Whether you go 1, 1 or 1, 1. In either case, you are doing an about turn. And what is halt? You do not do anything. That is plus 0. So now I have got numbers. Instead of the directions, I have numbers instead of, the, instead of moves. And every time I move, I am doing an operation modulo 4. Armed with this abstraction, now let's come to our problem. I am doing LA. What is L? L we have already agreed is uh, 1. So LA 1 plus 2 that is 3. Similarly another 3 here, another 3 here. So all in all I have got how many? 11 3's which is basically 33. I will postpone all my division by 4 at the, to the very end. Followed by RRR which is 3 minus 1 so that is minus 3 and halt has no effect plus 0. That gives you 30. Now if I divide 30 by 4 and take remainder I will get 2. So 30 equals 2 mod 4 which means the combined effect of all these is simply doing a 2 that is an about turn. So since he was facing north to start with, at the end he will be facing south. That's the answer. Without really carrying out any of the operations, I abstracted it out in terms of some mathematics. 
worked out the mathematical problem and came back to the concrete structure and gave you the answer. In both the cases, I did the same thing. I used what we call abstract algebra. Here I have got five cups in the top row and they are kept as in the erect position or in the or in the reverse position upright or in the reverse position and they alternate. So I will I can denote them as up, down, up, down and up. That is the initial configuration. Your goal is to bring them to this configuration where all the up cups are down and the down cups are up. In order to do this, you are allowed to take exactly two cups at each step. So you will pick two of them, not the same one, but two of them and toggle their position. For example, if I take this and this say, in that case, after the move it will be this is down, so this will become up and this is up, so this will become down and all the rest will retain their original configuration. So that is the game. <clears throat> the game is to use only these moves, as many of them as you like. Starting from this, you have to come to this. And the question says, in how many steps can you do it? What is the minimum number of steps with which you can do this? If you are not familiar with this particular puzzle, then I would suggest that you try to <coughs> solve this right now. Pause the video and try to do it. If not, if you already know this, then just continue viewing. So here the idea is this. <coughs> Whenever I am taking two cups and flipping them, there are only three possibilities. And the three possibilities are like this. <coughs> you are possibly starting with two up cups and converting them to down cups. Now, how does that change the number of up cups? Very easy. The number of up cups goes down by two. <coughs> or it could be that <coughs> you are starting with down cups and Flipping them upwards, in which case the number of up cups will go up by two. Or it could be like this situation, one of them is down and the other is up, down up or up down. Then it will become the down cup becomes up and the up cup becomes down, in which case it does not change at all. So the number of up cups can only go up by two, down by two or remain unaltered. Now, what is the number of up cups in the initial configuration? That is 3. 1, 2, 3. So, howsoever you try, in every step you can move from 3 to either 5 or to 1. From 5 you can come back to 3 or from 1 you can go back to 3. So, you will never go outside the set 1, 3 and 5. Had there been more cups, the idea is if you start with odd number of cups, then odd number of up cups, then the number of up cups will continue to be odd all throughout the game. Similarly, if you start with an even number of up cups, the number will continue to be even. Howsoever you proceed, irrespective of how many cups you have. So in this case, the final target number of up cup is only 2. So it is impossible to solve this puzzle. That is, howsoever you try, the number will never be 2, which is an even number. Now, on the face of it, this may not look like the same argument as we used for the last two problems, where we divided by something and took the remainder. However, here we looked at even and odd, the parity of a number, that is also nothing but division and taking remainder in disguise. When I say that 3 is odd, what do I mean? I mean that if you divide it by 2, then the remainder is 1. Similarly, 2 is even means if you divide it by 2, then the remainder is 0. So here I am considering all the numbers modulo 2. So this problem also actually has the same underlying abstract structure.
we shall look at a very famous puzzle which was made popular by the American puzzleist called Sam Lloyd who also falsely claimed to have invented this puzzle which was not true <coughs> but he popularized it. It is commonly known as the 15 puzzle. Now we have all seen this puzzle though may not be familiar with the name. This puzzle goes like this that there is a tray containing 15 tiles. These tiles are movable, they can slide and they are numbered 1 to 15 and one space is naturally left blank. What you can do is that you can slide these tiles with your fingers. For example, you can bring tile 12 here in which case the blank will occupy the position of 12 and then you can possibly bring down 8, 7 and so on. Your aim is to finally arrive at this configuration. So when the puzzle is originally sold, it is sold in this configuration where all the numbers are like this except 15 and 14 which have swapped places. Your goal is to go through these things always using nothing but slide moves. At the end of the day, every number should come back to its original position including the blank but 14 and 15 should be restored to their proper order. And Sam Lloyd had declared a hefty amount of price, a hefty amount of reward for whoever will solve it first. And at one time in America it became a craze around 1860 or 1870, something around that. It became a craze and many people bought a copy of this and tried and tried and tried. Some of them claimed that they have solved it but none of them could successfully demonstrate it before Sam Lloyd. And it remained unsolved until Sam Lloyd died. No one really knew how to do it and we still do not know whether Sam Lloyd thought it was possible. However, Sam Lloyd made a pretty neat sum of money by selling this puzzle. Only later people figured out, some mathematician figured out that this puzzle actually cannot be solved. Now I can leave it as a challenge for you to figure out how the same idea of dividing by a number and taking remainder is applicable here also to show that this puzzle is not solvable. So this is one example where the same idea is present but in a rather non-trivial way. Even with this hint, you will find it difficult to come up with a proof of its impossibility. So in all these examples, we saw situations where we have diverse concrete examples and if we could abstract them out into some mathematical problem, solve the mathematical problem and come back to a concrete solution. It is seen in many situations that diverse problems have the same underlying abstraction. In abstract algebra and in modern algebra, we try to study these abstract structures behind the concrete problems separately. So we study only the abstract structures so that given a concrete problem we can quickly recognize hey this is the structure that we have already studied so I can apply my knowledge there, do the mathematics in terms of that abstract structure and get a solution to the concrete problem. In the subsequent videos we shall see one very useful such abstraction. The abstraction that underlies all the examples that I have shown so far.